Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again. So I wanted to do a quick video on selling Bitcoin on Coinbase from your Ledger wallet. A lot of people are confused about this. It should be like second nature to you to transfer Bitcoin from your wallet to an exchange. I'm going to go over it real quick and show you the steps on cashing out on Bitcoin that you're holding in your wallet. So let's get started. All right, so I'm looking at the home page of my Ledger Live. They usually open it up to the portfolio section. You can go down to the accounts section, however you want to do it. And as you can see, I have three different Bitcoin accounts. We can think of these as wallets. Ledger Live refers to them as accounts. Each one of these is based on a different device. That may be more complicated than the setup that you have, but that's how I do it. A lot of people ask me, how do you manage multiple devices? It basically just depends which device is connected when you set up the account. So when you withdraw from the account, you need to have the proper device connected in order to manage the crypto. We're going to take this Bitcoin that's on my Bitcoin Flex and we're going to transfer it over to Coinbase. So we'll click here, go into the account. We want to do a send. So we can open that up. First thing at once is the address. Where do you want to send this Bitcoin? Well, I'm sending it to my Coinbase account. So let's go into my Coinbase account. All right, I'm in Coinbase Advanced. I like this interface better. We just go up to transfer and then we say receive crypto. It would be easier if they use deposit and withdraw for both crypto and cash. Instead of saying send crypto, they should say withdraw crypto. Instead of saying receive crypto, they should say deposit crypto. Uh, it would make things a little more clear, but we got to work with what we got. So we want to receive crypto into our Coinbase account. We want to receive Bitcoin. So it's giving us the Bitcoin address of our Coinbase account. Each person that has a Coinbase account has their own personalized Bitcoin address for their Bitcoin. Whether you have bought Bitcoin in the past or not, you can always generate a receiving address in Coinbase. Each, And this address will stay the same for you in Coinbase. Copy that into your clipboard. Go back over to your Ledger Live, paste the address in. The hard part's over. Now all we need to do is send this Bitcoin. Let's hit continue. Here's where we put in the amount of Bitcoin we want to send. I'm just going to send the max. Um, if you've got a lot of Bitcoin and you want to just sell some of it or move some of it, then put in how much you want. 0 0.001 if you want to do it that way. Or you can uh, just put in the amount of cash that you want. Right? We can say, okay, I want to sell $200 worth of Bitcoin. You can do it that way and it'll figure the Bitcoin for you. Or you can just hit send max. There's not a lot of Bitcoin in this particular account. I can just hit send max. Now down here about fees. These are not fees that you're paying to Ledger. These are blockchain fees that are being charged for using the Bitcoin network. That's how Bitcoin works. It's a community-based project. There are people out there that are maintaining the Bitcoin network, miners who are creating new Bitcoin and processing transactions. The way this whole setup works is the end users that are using the network pay small fees to these miners. Uh, otherwise, the miners wouldn't do what they do. So, you have to pay a Bitcoin blockchain fee when you send Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network. You have it in your wallet. You're sending it to Coinbase. You need to pay a blockchain fee. Now you can click slow and pay a, a smaller fee in Satoshi's or you can click fast and pay a larger fee in Satoshi. Personally, I don't think these speeds make that much difference. I always leave mine at medium. You have to be careful though. I've talked to some people that try to do a custom fee and get this fee down to zero. That's not a good thing. It's just going to uh, make your transaction take so long, you're gonna stress out. Don't try to 
get your fee down to zero. It's not advisable or one or whatever. Just click medium. It's easy. Don't even think about it. Yes, it's going to cost me $1.46. I get that. It's high, comparatively speaking. Now, this is a fairly small amount of Bitcoin. You might have a similar fee for $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. Or even uh, $10,000 worth of Bitcoin might just be a couple of bucks. It's not based on percentages. It's just based on blockchain activity. If activity is high, fees go up. So keep that in mind when you're uh, managing Bitcoin. We'll hit continue. We'll hit continue once again. If we want to here, we can double check our receiving address, right? There's that receiving address, the beginning and end of it. We can just do a double check. If it looks right, go ahead and hit continue. Now we need to authorize the transaction, right? That's the security of your device. So get out your device, connect it to your computer using your USB cable. All right, here's my device. We'll enter the pin. All right, I connected and unlocked my device. It immediately recognizes it and asks me to open the Bitcoin app because I'm sending Bitcoin. So we'll just open the Bitcoin app. Now it wants me to sign the transaction. So there's the amount and there's the fees that I just set up. We'll swipe over, right? There's some more information. We'll swipe again. Now I need to uh, hold this and to sign. And off it goes. If you're using an older uh, Ledger Nano device, you would click both buttons at that point. Now we can view details if we want. It's not strictly necessary. It's going to show you over here how much Bitcoin you sent and what your fees were. Now all you have to do is wait for the Bitcoin to hit your Coinbase account. You can also view it on the Blockchain Explorer if you want to go down that rabbit hole. That's not strictly necessary either. But if you click view on Explorer, you will see a blockchain explorer here that'll give you some information about your transaction. Um, it has to confirm on the blockchain before it becomes spendable. Um, and Coinbase has its own processing that has to go through. So it uh, could take uh, a few minutes. It could take 10 minutes. It could take 30 minutes to actually hit your Coinbase account and become spendable. Uh, so be patient. Okay, and there you go. I uh, just did another refresh in my portfolio, and boom, the Bitcoin has arrived. All right, so now we want to sell. So we need to click right here. If we click here on the letters, it's going to take us over to the uh, wallet interface. We don't want to transfer Bitcoin. We want to just sell it for cash in this case. So we'll click here, and it'll take us to the trading interface. And the default is BTC USD, right? So I want to do a sell and I want to just sell it all. So I'm going to click max and you can see down here, I'm going to get charged another $2.20 as a trading fee. Now this is Coinbase charging you, not the blockchain. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. Sell Bitcoin. Next thing you know, uh, we go back to our portfolio. Now we have cash in our portfolio. Now, uh, I want it in my bank. I want it in there right now. So we go back to transfer and this time it makes sense, right? Withdraw cash and I can put in uh, any amount that under what I've got. Uh, I don't like to use the max because sometimes when it's trying to calculate the fees, things get kind of screwy. So I always leave some sense in there. So uh, I'm going to go 292. Now, the instant transfer is going to cost you, right? You can uh, switch that uh, for a one to three business day. That would be totally free. Or you can do it with the fees to get it instantly, whatever suits you. All right, I'll take the fees. I'll hit preview and uh, withdraw cash now. It wants my two-factor authentication. And it's gone. And I just got an alert. Uh, an email that the money just hit my bank account. I can go into my uh, Chase app and see that uh, the money is in there. So that's it. Easy peasy. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. 
When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.